Hey guys, does this look familiar? I'm Dr. Aaron Horshing, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to fix a knee cave. Get up and get down, get up and get down. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to fix knee cave when you squat so you can have great looking technique and perform to your greatest potential. Now most cases of knee cave whenever you squat happens on the ascent, which means it's likely not as much of a mobility issue, but more of a stability issue. And this all starts with our fix at our feet. All right, now that I have my shoes off, let's talk about foot stability. Your feet set the base for your body's house of cards. And if your feet aren't stable, everything else up the rest of your body will never be as stable as it can be, specifically your knees, whenever you're squatting, especially with heavy load. So let's curl back down. If I go down into a deep squat, my feet should stay in a good arch. Now, even if you have flat feet, what I don't want to see is excessive pronation. So I don't want to see that foot collapse over anymore. What we want to see is a good tripod foot. The base of your first toe, the base of your fifth toe and your heel should be in equal contact with the ground the entire time. And when you get into a deep squat, that shouldn't shift. So I don't want to hear people use the cue, wait on the heels, because technically we want our weight spread evenly across all three parts of the tripod. Now, one way that can be very helpful at solidifying this tripod is to think about grabbing the ground with your big toe jammed down and then driving your knees out to the side. Watch what happens when I do that. So big toes down, jam the knees out to the side. My foot just moved into an arch and it's a very stable position. When most people have knee cave whenever they ascend from a squat, this is often what happens. As they come up, they shift weight off that outside part of the tripod, which allows the knee stability to then break down. So if I want to have good knee control and squat with great looking technique, it all starts with solidifying the base of foundation right here with a proper stable foot. So think about the entire time you squat, having your foot in a good arch as much as possible, even if you have flat feet, try to have your body weight spread evenly across the tripod. Heel, base of your first toe, base of your fifth toe, jam your big toe down, bring your knee out to the side a little bit, and maintain that stable foot the entire time you squat. Visualize and feel for what's going on at your feet during your warmups. As you're doing some body weight squats, feel for what's happening at your feet. As you go up and down during your warmups, feel and sense for what's happening. Are you shifting forward? Are you shifting back? Are you shifting in or shifting out? The position of your feet have a direct relationship with your knees. If your feet cave in, what happens to your knees? If your feet go out, what happens to your knees? They move out. Now, drive the knees wide is a very common cue, but sometimes it's used way too much. If you drive your knees too far wide in a squat, what happens? Your feet roll on their side. Your feet are not as stable as they could be. You just lost your tripod foot. So drive the knees wide can be a great cue to fix knee cave as long as your big toe stays jammed down in the ground and you solidify that tripod foot, keeping that base of the first toe down. Now, I don't care if you squat a thousand pounds. As you've seen some of my uh, past videos, you can see some of my big power lifters I've worked with. I still have them do single leg squats. While they may not to need to do a full pistol squat, they should still have the capability to do a good single leg squat and control their body on one leg. So what I'm looking for is can you, and try this at home, do a single leg squat down and back up close to parallel depth without losing your foot position and with maintaining good knee control. So you can just pick your foot up, can you squat down and back up? And is that knee remaining directly in line with the foot, torso staying upright, down and back up? Is your knee caving in? A lot of times people who have problems in knee control, as soon as they go into that single leg squat, things start wobbling around because they lack dynamic knee control. Now, how do we improve that? This is called the balance and reach exercise. It is a single leg squat variation that's going to have you control your lower body in a variety of different angles. So you have to produce proper lower body stability in different challenging positions. You're gonna put your foot right in the center of the tape. Now they do make very expensive mats that you can use, or you can just throw some tape on the ground like I did that works just fine. From here, we're gonna start with the easiest position. We're gonna reach straight back. So you're gonna get into a single leg stance. Solidify that good, stable tripod foot. Body weight is evenly spread across the base of our heel. First toe, fifth toe, foot is grabbing the ground, big toe jammed down. Stabilize your core, 
What we're gonna do is squat and reach straight back. So we're squatting and reaching. Notice how my pelvis is staying level. I'm not shifting to the side with my upper body. I'm making sure that my knee stays directly in line with my foot. I'm not allowing knee cave. My foot isn't collapsing over. I'm reaching as far as I can go and I'm pausing. So I'm going as far out as I can. Foot's almost over the edge of the ground. I'm not pushing into the ground like a lunge and I'm holding. Now at the start, for some people, if you lack good knee control, you may only be able to go a couple inches here and then back up. Starting with the proper hip hinge, you may not be able to go very far and then things start to wobble around. That's okay. We're gonna try to go as far as we can every time and try to get a little bit more improvement. Start small here, back up, hold for a couple seconds. If you're doing this with a proper hip hinge where your hips go back and chest comes forward, you should feel your glutes turning on, good knee control, down and back up. Now, how do we challenge ourselves to go up to the next level in knee stability? We're gonna go at the angle. So we're gonna go out to the side, sort of trace, and again, chest and torso are leaning straight forward, knee in alignment, foot in a good stable tripod position. I'm going out at this position. This is gonna place a little bit more demand on my lateral hips, my glute medius, to control that knee from rolling in because now I'm reaching a little bit more further away from my center of gravity in this position. I'm placing a little bit more demand on my body to control this side to side rotation of my knee. And then back up. Now, the last way you can go, let's go directly in this medial reach right here. So I'm gonna be here, squat down as far as I can, back up. Let's say I wanna go a little bit further. Can I do so? Chest leaning straight forward, back up. Common faults, again, what do we see? People are going to start reaching out to the side. They'll think their lower body's in a good position, but what's their upper body doing? Even though my knee's in line with my foot, where's my upper body leaning? To the side. I want to make sure that my entire body is in good alignment. If I'm trying to do a squat, a clean, a jerk, I need my upper body in good alignment with my lower body. So this, even though my knee is not caved in, is not a good position because I just completely forgot about my upper body in relation to the lower body. So as you hinge, hips back, chest forward, reaching out to the side. Right here, this lateral hip is kicking on to keep my knee in line. Good foot stability, reaching out and back up. Let's do that one more time. Out to the side. I'm hovering with this foot, I'm not touching down. And then back up. So that is the balance and reach exercise. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, you can do that in a number of different positions. I'll even have some people go behind themselves and whatnot. But for just the most basic exercise, posterior, posterior medial, and medial reach can be very, very helpful. Again, get out of your shoes so you can feel and see the problem that you have in creating a good stable foundation with your foot. This is called RNT, reactive neuromuscular training. What you're gonna do is use a band. Now, if you're lifting with a friend, uh, they can grab a band and apply this resistance themselves. But if you are doing this on your own, all you have to do is just grab your band and put it around a rig. We are going to have this band up above the knee. And what is it doing? It's pulling the knee in. This is the motion of adduction and internal rotation of that thigh, which is the motion that happens when you have that knee cave, that knee collapse called knee valgus. So it is pulling us into a bad position. We're calling this feeding the problem. What we're gonna do then is just try to continue to perform a good single leg squat. Now you can do this like you did with the balance and reach exercise we did earlier. You're gonna stand in single leg and you are going to perform a small squat and you can reach back and then back up. All you're going to do is just try to maintain stability. And your body is getting this force that's trying to pull itself in. It's trying to feed the dysfunction of this. So you are teaching your body that in order to stay stable and in order to maintain balance and technique, it has to teach these lateral glutes to kick on. It has to teach your body how to create the stability so it doesn't fall over. So this is reacting to the neuromuscular problem, a training stimulus of driving the knee over into the problem. Your body's reacting and learning how to maintain stability. So this is a single leg squat. You can do it in a couple different positions, but this is the basis of the exercise is we're feeding the dysfunction of the knee rolling in, the body's reacting, learning balance, learning how to fix the problem, and then 
teaching it how to maintain sufficient timing and coordination of those lateral hip muscles to keep everything in good alignment. So that is RNT. Now, what's that exact same idea look like in a double leg squat? We eventually have to get back to your double leg training. We're gonna use a band. This is a slingshot band, a hip circle from Mark Bell and the slingshot team. This is the grippy hip circle. I like this one a lot because the inside actually sticks to your legs pretty well, especially if you're using pants or any type of slick short when you're training. But you're gonna put this around your knees. And from here, you're gonna just assume your natural squat stance. Have your feet in a good position, good stable tripod, body weight's evenly spread across those positions. Create that stable knee by driving your knees out to the side. Now right here, why is this just like the RNT? It's because your body is reacting to the stimulus that is driving your knees in. It's feeding the dysfunction of knee cave. So our body's going to react by teaching it how to create that stability. Keep the knees out to the side. And from here, we're just going to go into your regular squat, maintain that good tripod position, feel for your feet, drive the knees out to the side, slowly squat down, all the way down. Now remember that knee cave often doesn't come out to the very ascent. So on the way you, that you are coming up, drive those knees out to the side, hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Squat all the way back down. Back up again, one, two, three, four, five. Again, here, big toes jammed down to the ground. Knees out to the side, feel those lateral glutes kicking on. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as hard as you can. Back down, teach your body how to ascend and maintain those hips and their tension the entire time. Something like this before every single squat day. I'm doing a couple sets, maybe 10 reps in a row, a couple of those half ascent pauses. And if I'm doing this correctly, I'm feeling very stable because those lateral hips are burning like crazy. They're turned on. It's not just that we're turning and strengthening a weak muscle, but we're working on timing and coordination because that is the essence of stability. And stability is different than strength. We can strengthen the heck out of a muscle by doing lateral kicks or those machines where you're going out to the side. But just because a muscle is strong does not mean that it can turn on and be used to help you move with better technique. That's the key difference between strength and stability. So all these exercises we talked about today were helping you improve your stability, the way your brain is working with your muscles to control your body and maintain perfect technique. And if you have great looking technique, you're gonna be able to perform to your greatest potential and lift some big ass weight. So, Hope you guys liked today's quick YouTube video. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about in future videos. And if you did, again, enjoy this video and all the other ones I'm putting out, please share the videos with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Until next week, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes so i pay no mind why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos these people have